utilize uh, you know contributions of different developers different blogs and mostly the master Aurelio Geron okay so uh, let's first start and look at the concept of the kernel we'll be, uh, recap this very quickly so if you remember that in in a simple case the two classes can be linearly separable so that was the case when we were using this maximum margin classifier and then when it is non-linearly separable there is a kind of uh, non-linearity so then you can go for polynomial uh, decision boundary so this is second degree polynomial this is third degree polynomial and then it can be something like this so uh, there are you know density portions okay density portions uh, within another class so you can draw kernels we are like which are like circles so has a radius so radial basis functions and then sigmoid functions allow you to have classes you know but it, it is linear but then then you can have multiple boundaries okay uh, so that's the beauty of svm you can have different kind of nonlinear boundaries so let's start with the housekeeping let's you know import all these libraries okay and then let's go ahead and look at an example so we'll start with a very very well known example called as iris data set which has uh, attributes of a flower okay and there are three classes which are shown here versicolor setosa and virginica okay and the attributes measured are you know length and width of petal and length and width of sepal so an observation will look like this that it will have four parameters sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and its corresponding class level okay so now uh, let's go ahead and uh, start experimenting so there are some data sets already there in python and you can there are methods so you can do a data sets dot load iris and the data will be loaded and you can get the data or the independent variables in iris data and the target in iris target so essentially what we want to do is we want to visualize this decision boundary in two dimensional plane because we cannot see anything uh, beyond that and then let's look at uh, only two classes because you know svm origin in, in its original form it is for binary classification so y equal to 0 1 and 2 for uh, all these three classes we are selecting only 0 and 1 okay and let's then train uh, with a linear kernel and c equal to zero uh, so c is a regularization parameter we'll see the effect of c very soon okay so uh, you know is the model is stored in svm clf there are several arguments for that i'll just run and look at the support vectors if you remember so there are two classes and one support vector for each so and and these are the coordinates of the support vectors okay so it looks like the support vectors are well separated so here is a function to draw the decision boundary and i'll be real quick here so basically you you uh, take the model as an input and and uh, the x axis particulars so you get you know uh, the so the line is going to be wx plus b so you are getting w and b over here and then if you do a small transformation so w0 x0 w1 x1 plus b equal to 0 so from there you can find how x1 will be so you you uh, create x0 uh, which is uh, which by this uh, command and then you create x1 and uh, by some mathematical calculation you can see that actually mar margin cal be calculated with respect to w okay and then by gutter up and gutter down what we are doing is we are plotting the supporting lines of the decision boundary and then finally uh, you know we are plotting the support vectors and the decision boundary and uh, uh, this is the function so let's quickly run this function okay all right so the function is created now let's look at the decision boundary of i so what we are doing is that uh, the function is trained so this is the model this is a function that we just created and this is the starting point of x and this is the highest value of x and then we are plotting uh, plotting the actual points over here okay and uh, and with the necessary levels all right 
So let's see how it looks like. So if you look like this, you can see that, okay, uh, you have a linear decision boundary indeed and you know these are your supporting lines and these are the two that we saw are the support vectors okay so so far so good that's how you know you can use uh, is vm to train your model okay now uh, let's look at so if you remember we take a value of c now let's take a value very small value of uh, c equal to 0 0.1 and let's see what happens okay so if you see that if you make c equal to uh, 0 0.1 so it is more uh, flexible okay your model is becoming more flexible it is allowing more misclassification okay so if you allow more misclassification then your bias will be high but your variance will go down okay so these models are essentially simpler models okay so if you re so 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 to remember so if you increase c your model becomes more complex more uh, prone to find complex patterns as well as more prone uh, to be overfit okay now let's look at polynomial kernel and uh, here we are going to use a famous function called as make moons and uh, we are defining another function plot data set which essentially uh, plots a two dimensional data set colored by uh, the so it is a binary classification there are two classes so colored each class colored by different color okay so uh, this is what we do here and this is the data set so you, you can understand why it is called moon so these are you know two half moons which are overlapping and now you can see that the decision boundary is of course not linearly separable so nevertheless let's try and fit one you know uh, linear classifier and see how it turns out and we, we follow the same convention right so we plot it now and you know this is how it looks like so you, you, you know it doesn't understand uh, the decision boundary well so it just thinks that wherever there is an overlap that is uh, that are you know that are misclassifications and then you know rest of the things are properly classified so you can understand that linear classifier will not hold here okay so before i move on you know in psych it you will see that <laughs> there are there is one uh, option of uh, having a support vector classified with linear kernel and also there is something called as linear SVC. Okay, so initially I was you know quite confused. So why these two variants? So I thought you know let's uh, give you some explanation of this. Okay, so you know SVC uh, with parameter kernel equal to linear uh, is is uh, of course you can draw linear classification but when you use a linear svc then it has more flexibility in choice of penalty and loss functions okay and it is more scalable it turns out also there is one more thing that uh, i would like to mention if, if you remember that uh, svm in its like original form is only for binary classification and then uh, it is extended by either one versus one or one versus the rest scheme okay so uh, here, uh, uh, this this works as one versus the rest scheme, uh, the linear SVC. Okay, whereas SVC with linear kernel works on the one versus one scheme. So one versus the rest, you need only k support vectors. One versus one, you will need k into k minus one by two uh, support vectors. If you remember. Okay. Now, as we talked about loss function, so essentially if you remember uh, that loss function is something where you are trying to see how your predicted data is matching the actual data okay and svm's uh, general loss function is called as a hinge loss okay and that also deserves an explanation okay so it is not any any like particular loss function please understand that what we are interested at is always that if any observation any vectors are not or any vectors are violating the margins of the decision boundary okay if it is on the right side then we are not bothered that by what amount they are on the right side okay so this is defined as you know maximum of 0 and 1 minus t into y okay so t is uh, the classification levels plus 1 minus 1 so this is the actual output like, like the expected output and classifier score is the actual output 
but uh, it is not scaled to plus one or minus one. Okay, so let's now let's uh, understand this with an example. All right, so let's say your uh, loss function. Let's say your t was minus one. Okay, and uh, y was minus one point two. So you can understand that it is beyond minus 1.2. So it is in the minus 1 class. So actually there is no loss. So it doesn't matter to it that it is minus 1.2. Similarly, if it is minus 1.3, it doesn't matter to it. Okay. Now when it is one, both are one, of course, the loss is zero. Similarly, if you look at this example also, one and 2.3. Okay. But still, this is on the correct side of the margin. Are you understanding? Okay, so the loss is again here going to be zero. Similarly, minus one, minus one, the loss is going to be zero, and the final loss is also zero. Now let's take this example. So t is minus one, and y is minus zero point two. So you understand that if it is minus zero point two, and you assume that the uh, the decision boundaries are between plus one to minus one, you can understand that it is violating the condition. Okay, so that's why there is a loss. Similarly, it is minus 1 and 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 is not even in the same side, but on the other side. So even the loss has gone up from minus 0 0.2. Okay. So here, you know, it is at least on the correct side. So loss is 0 0.9. Here, you know, uh, there is no loss. Both, both have the same value. 1, 1.5. There is no loss. Minus 1, minus 2. There is no loss. So the total loss is 2.3. So what essentially I am trying to tell you is that how... Uh, you know, uh, support vector uh, with a linear kernel will make its journeys. It will look at different uh, combinations, uh, different combinations of the parameters, uh, which will give, give give different y's. Okay, and then we'll see that which is giving lesser loss, and it will slowly converge towards that. Okay, so this is the loss function, which is an important function to know. Now, what we are going to do is uh, we have seen uh, how to you know, draw the decision boundary for linear uh, kernel. So this is a, a, a simplification for polynomial kernel or extension towards polynomial kernel where you are taking, uh, you are basically taking the different starting points of both x-axis and y-axis. You are creating a grid. Uh, then you are plotting all x over mm -hmm. there. Then you are taking y prediction and y decision that you are uh, finding out. And then finally, you are plotting them in a contour. Contour because, you know, this is going to be a curvilinear linear or a polynomial decision boundary. So let's run this. All right. Now let's use on a make moons data set. Let's use uh, the, the polynomial kernel with degree 2. Okay. Uh, now uh, we are fitting it and then finally... Uh, when we are using plot prediction and plot data set, we are simply telling that, you know, x axis spans from minus 1.5 to 2.5 and y spans from minus 1 to 1.5. Okay, so let's run this and see how it comes out. Okay, so, you know, you, you can see that it, it has become somewhat better. Uh, you know, it's uh, the it, it can it has a kind of carbon linear nature, okay? Uh, but all right, still you see there are some misclassifications, okay? So let's play around. Let's maybe change the degree a little bit. Let's make it degree 10 and let's see what happens, okay? All right, now once you do degree 10, you see that, you know, it is quite correctly classified. So. So the degree has an effect that what is the nature of the car, right? And, you know, if you if you go on increasing this, this may not be very good. So all these things, as you increase, as you make your model more and more complex, what will happen again? Your bias will go down, but your variance will increase, okay? Now let's look at support vector regression. So we are going to use the same example of the advertising data set, okay? So I'm not going ahead and explaining it, okay? So this is the... Uh, three columns where you have spent on TV, radio, and newspaper, and the final column is about sales. And then we are using, uh, we are fast splitting into a training and testing. And then we are using a linear kernel. Okay. Okay. 
So this uh, will take a little bit of time to train. So let's quickly do one thing in that time. Let's go ahead and discuss the parameters. Okay. So one important parameter of the kernel is called kernel. So by default it is RBF, but it can be any one of linear, polynomial, RBF and sigmoid. So we have already seen the effect of all of this in the initial picture, how the decision boundary changes. Degree of the polynomial also we saw what is the effect by changing the degree in the make moons data set. Loss function we discussed, it can be hinge and there is also an option where you can use squared hinge. And now for larger values of C, you know, a smaller margin will be accepted if the decision function is better at classifying all training points correctly. Whereas a lower C will encourage a larger margin, okay. So simpler decision function. So as you, you know, increase C, your model will be more complex. Okay. So it can find more complex patterns. Okay. And same is the case of gamma. So gamma basically tells you that what is the influence of, you know, single training example, especially the support vectors. Okay. Uh, so if it has low values, then the support vectors are deciding. If it is high value, then you are allowing more vectors more to be support vectors. So you can understand that as you again increase gamma, it will be, your model will be more complex. So this is a three classification problem. You see gamma equal to zero. It has kind of linear uh, separation. As you uh, increase gamma, so the classification boundaries are changing or becoming more and more complex. Okay. Now uh, let's quickly uh, go ahead and look at the score. Yes, we, the, your model is run now. Let's run this. Okay, so it is getting and R2 score of 81.31, which means that the model explains 81.31% variation. So there can be several uh, things that can be done uh, on support vector machine. Okay, so I encourage you to experiment, uh, go through the kernel. This is this will be uploaded in the video section uh, as uh, like as last time. And please feel free to give your comments, your questions and I will try to answer each one of them. Thank you so much for watching.